Any study you look at that uh, is looking at the clergy of the United States, just the world even, look at the clergy in this diocese, reveals that our priests and bishops, in fact, most of our lay folks as well, and they're working in the church, are getting older. Which leads me to the reflection upon aging, upon supposedly retirement. I said to Bishop Shelton, by the way, I finally found out what that word retired means. He says, what? I said, it just means being tired again. That's all it means. So. He said, I have the thing that'll take care of all your problems. I have another parish for you to take over. Just joking. But it reminds me, i uh, show my age here, back in the 60s, there was a Jesuit uh, who would do spiritual writings. Uh, his name was John, we call him Jack, Jack Powell. Does anybody remember Jack Powell back in the 60s? Okay, I'm showing my age. He was a popular spiritual writer back in the 60s, and he has a message that I think uh, even applies to modern times, if you would. In one of his works, hopefully I've probably mentioned this to a couple of folks here, he tells the experience in his seminary training that changed his life. One evening, he was helping on the nursing floor of the Jesuit community, and he was given the task to help two elderly Jesuit priests in adjoining rooms to get ready for bed. One elderly Jesuit was very pleasant, very thankful for all that the Lord God had done for him, everything that Jack was doing for him, huh? He shared with Father Powell some of his life story, the hard work of spreading the gospel, helping others in need, all of his years of hard work on the missions. Now he saw them as blessings for his later years, and he blessed Father Powell for his assistance. To the contrary, the other priest was rather bitter, complaining about everything that Jack did for him that wasn't just quite enough or right, complaining about how little God loved him, what God had done for him, making him suffer. And he shared with Father Jack the bitterness of his life story, the unrewarded hard work of ministry, the trials endured, the loneliness he suffered, how no one seemed to be there to help him in his need. All of his years of work were seen as a curse as his, well, we entered in his aging years. And he cursed Father Jack for his, Father Jack's, incompetence, he said. Now, upon reflection, Father Powell, spiritual writer, writes, here before him were two ways of life, both doing the same ministry, one leading to contentment and blessing, happiness and apparent holiness, the other leading to an infectious bitterness in all aspects of life, leading to anger at God and others, leading to despair in time of need, proffering a curse, not a blessing. And Father Powell writes, here were two possible roads to take in his future ministry. In a few years, he said, I will be one of these priests. Which one will it be? Which one will I choose? That was Father Powell's world and Father Powell's time. In the midst of the current crises of life in this modern world, I think that question he puts before us is it apropos for the day as well, huh? Today, the scriptures ask each of us here to examine life as we have experienced, as we experience it today, to see the brokenness that exists there, yes, but also to see the need for healing, healing in ourselves and in the lives of other loved ones, and to question whether we have had a hand in causing evil and despair due to our pessimism or whether in our struggle to live the gospel, we have really truly helped transform our own human weakness by living the good news of salvation and spreading that good news from God's word. Job, you ever read that? It's an interesting book, read it. Job symbolizes in this reading at least, the person who has everything going for him whose world is suddenly turned upside down. Though the story of Job ends differently, today's reading easily points out how a person who doesn't handle things well, the pessimistic side of us all, how such a one is tempted to give in to despair, like the old second priest there in the story, whose life is drudgery, he says, slavery, bitterness, restlessness, no good to be seen, no hope to be experienced, only more and more travail and trial until at last we give up and die. 
Rather sad, don't you think? Paul, though, comes along in Corinthians. He's the one who exhibits the opposite trend of life and faith, gladly accepting the discipline of living the faith so as to experience the joy and the optimism of the gospel, the good news, the blessing of the kingdom, in spite of his own trials. Paul preaches the good news mandated by the faith he has chosen. Huh? It's a compunction, he says, to proclaim the message of salvation, the goodness and the love of the Lord God, who is love. Freely making himself a slave to all, he says, so as to minister to all. Freely making himself into a proclaimer of God's word without thinking of reward or punishment. Being all things to all people, he says, huh? to win at least some of them back to the Lord, all for the glory and honor of God. Mark's gospel. Jesus is portrayed as the epitome of gospel optimism in the midst of a weakened world then and even now. Jesus dispels the demons and the spirits of selfishness and despair, and Jesus entrusted that same mission to all of us. He is one who models the good news of the kingdom. He is the one who models the love of the Father. He is the love of the Father, the ministry of salvation, the healing that is offered. The God of love in Jesus Christ shows compassion toward his children. And through the action of his son, God teaches us how to endure trials lives. Life's trials, how's that? God strengthens us against the despair that can come so quickly in modern times. And the task of life in our modern pandemic and divided world, on the home front, in the family, in the school, in the community, even in our church, who would you want to be who does little talking but a lot of hard work, happily chipping in to do the work required without complaint, without whining? As in life, so in faith, what type of person do you want assisting you in your journey to the kingdom? What type of Christian are you? Do you try to help others? These are the, those, uh, these are the, there are those in our lives and our families and our friends who are indeed broken, broken in despair, like Job in the first reading, who need a healing word, who have lost all that they consider important in their lives, a spouse through divorce or death, a child suddenly, tragically, a parent after a long and debilitating illness, a friend due to aging and human frailty, what type of Christian are you that you would offer such a person help? As a parent, what type of faith are you passing on to those who follow? A faith that is positive, that sees the value and blessings of gospel life, that gladly accepts and models the discipline of faith, the gospel ministry even during this troublesome life. A faith that shows the possibility of joy, the joy of life. Nor are you one that only grudgingly endures the commands of God. Coming to church because you want heaven rather than hell. Avoiding the call to better ourselves for the benefit of others. Instead, selfishly trying to get away with whatever we can get away with. And teaching our offspring by word and example to do the same. We respond to life depending on what type of person we are. We do the same with faith. One type of person is confounded and overwhelmed by their own life and its trials, being of little help to others. Their own lives are filled with bitterness, pessimism, anger, even hatred of God and hatred for others. The other type of person accepts the wisdom of God, the wisdom of the ages, that suffering happens to the best of us, to the worst of us, that suffering is part of being human, but that same wisdom tells us that life can be filled with joy. The wisdom of God tells us that what is important is how we contend, how we help others to contend with whatever comes our way, how we bear up in the trials of life and faith. And so how do we become, how do we remain a person of great faith in the midst of the current crises of life and world? How? We go to our loving God. To be healed by word and sacrament, that's what we're doing here tonight. To be strengthened to contend 
to help strengthen others and assist them in their need. Our faith tells us that we have a God who loves us so much that he could not bear to see us suffer alone. Then in his son Jesus, he took upon our human nature, our weakened nature. He suffers with us. That he came along with us to join us in our suffering, to support us with his own suffering, to teach us how to live, truly live, the good news of the gospel, huh? Our faith tells us that we have a God who knows what it means to lose a loved one, to experience loss of family. We have a God who knows what it means to die. Our faith tells us we have a God who cries with us at unfaithfulness in marriage, at the loss of our children through sickness or violence, at the lack of justice in life. In the Gospels, Jesus healed many, yes, He helped spread the kingdom of God. God's word says, whoever opens themselves to Christ, to the faith, to his message of salvation, receives a share in the kingdom he proclaimed. Receives as well a mission of service to become more compassionate towards others in their pain. Every day the word of God challenges us to make a choice. To become a true gospel person, a modern day disciple, a positive, compassionate Christian of faith, to experience the healing from all the demons of our self-doubt, frustration, and guilt, so that in turn we might help others, lead others by the joyful, faithful service that we can give, to experience the God who is love, the God who loves us with compassion, the God who suffers with us. Instead of bitterness and pessimism in this modern life, just think about the world. Remember, there's always reason for optimism, for the joy of gospel living that can bring healing to all of our lives. To be such a Christian is to accept the challenge of gospel living, righteous moral living, loving service of all, love God, love neighbor. To be such a gospel believer is not to live by sliding by, which takes us toward eventual pessimism, eventual anger, and eventually despair. Hear God's word. Today, accept your own brokenness. We are all broken. Open yourselves to that compassionate God of love, who is love. Receive his healing and his mission of service and begin to truly live your faith in Jesus Christ. Those two old priests mentioned by Father Powell should indeed give us pause to reflect. One was well on the way to the kingdom. The other was just a sad individual in need of redemption. All of us here will eventually be like one of those old priests. Which person do you really want to become? Which one will it be for you? The choice is yours. Choose. Choose wisely. Choose life. Choose joy. Choose the kingdom of God. Choose the salvation that is to come. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand if you would.